Okay, so I'm going to show you how to easily assemble a virus genome from reads and a reference sequence. And in this case, I've just downloaded everything from publicly available data. And these are SARS-CoV-2 reads, and I have the original SARS-CoV-2 reference sequence here. The only thing you need to install is IVAR, SAM tools, and VWA, and I've just installed them into my Conda environment. I will include a link to my video where I show you how to set up a Conda environment. But anyways, this is very simple. We're going to use BWA MEM to assemble the reads using the reference. But first we need to make a BWA index of the reference actually. So BWA index, and then we'll just point at the sequence. Actually, let me move the sequence and index into a new folder just to clean everything up. Now we can use VWA and the M, and we're going to use the default settings, but I'm going to set it to eight threads just to speed it up a bit. It won't take long anyways. Um, and then we need to point at the reference sequence, which is in ref, and then the seek fasto. And then we just need to point to the fastq file, so SSR, the R1 file, and then SR, the R2 file. We could do an output.bam here. But we're just going to pipe it into SAM tools sort so that we get a sorted BAM. And then we can just save this as um, a sorted BAM. So it really only takes a couple seconds. But now we have a sorted BAM. So we could have skipped saving the sorted BAM and just piped it into the next command. But I like having the BAM file because now we can look at how many reads actually mapped. We do SAM tools flag stat, and we look at the sorted BAM. Let's see, we have 98% of our reads mapped, so we know that most likely this was the correct reference that we used. But anyway, now we're going to use SAM tools m pile up, and we're going to include every position, so we need to pass dash a a. And then we're going to count orphan reads. You don't have to, but in this case, if a read maps and it doesn't have a made, probably still correct because we did targeted sequencing. And then we need to specify the max depth for mpileup. So we use dash D for depth. And depending on the version of SAM tools, zero should specify no limit. But I'm actually just going to put a million just in case that the zero doesn't work. Of course, if you were doing some crazy deep sequencing and you expect more than a million depth, increase the D. And then I want to do a minimum base quality of 20, and then we just need to point at the sorted BAM. So what this does is just outputs stats for every position in the BAM. But what we can do, instead of actually saving this to file, we're going to pipe it into IVAR consensus, which will take the output from mpileup and create a sequence consensus from it. And here we're going to set a variant threshold at 0.8. So this means that the majority base, if it's below 0.8, you'll get an ambiguous character. So for example, if there were 85 A's and 15 T's, it would still call an A, but if there were 79 A's and 21 T's, you would get an ambiguous character there instead. So we're going to set the M flag to 10, which is the minimum depth required to call that base. And then we just have to specify a file name output. In this case, let's just call it test. So it'll name the FASTA test.fasta. Right, and now we have the new FASTA file, test.fasta. And this is the sequence assembled from your reads. And here, these ends were probably because it was less than um, the depth of 10. And then it'll just be the rest of your sequence. So super simple. A couple things to point out is if you know your primer sequences and where they map, you can trim the primer sequences out of the sorted BAM with another IVAR function called, I think it's called IVAR trim. 
Um, you can look into that because uh, primers and Ampicon sequencing will contribute to error if the primer doesn't match the actual virus sequence. And one last but important point is that you really should do QC on this. You shouldn't just upload it to a database. Um, you should open it in IGV and you should check each individual position or at least do a quick scan just to make sure there's no obvious assembly errors. If there's enough interest or if somebody wants me to show you how to do that, you can just put a comment. Otherwise, I don't plan to do an IDV video, even though it's very useful in these assemblies.